The purpose of this video is to provide an engineering-focused readout of several of the new ZD components that we're bringing online as part of the ZD browser support. These include the ZD Browser Edge Client, the ZD Browser Core, and the ZD Browser Runtime. As you can see, most of the readmes uh, are still uh, taking shape. You know, some coming soon verbiage down there. More details will be added soon. But one of the things I'm doing is trying to cross-link uh, to certain things that are out on our blog or, or back to the ZD.dev site. I wanted to spend a moment uh, doing a little bit deeper dive on the actual ZD Browser Edge Client component. If we look at the code of the ZD Browser Edge Client, the client code itself isn't actually checked in. That's because it gets generated on the fly during the build. And the single source of truth is actually over in the OpenZD Edge repo. So what this, uh, what the build of this component does is read the Swagger spec from that repo over into this build, and then we interpolate it. And we actually run the Swagger spec through a code generator that I have written. And the code generator actually builds the Edge Client code itself. So let me go ahead and run the build. The build is done. Come back here, go into the distro. This is uh, the code that was auto-generated. Um, this, this code here is basically the code generator. It runs during the build and produces this file which is uh, the actual component that we now know as the ZD Browser Edge Client. We will go ahead and also during generation park the Swagger spec version number right here in the, uh, in the code. Uh, other components throughout the, the ZD Browser uh, universe will uh, new up a new class, uh, a new ZD Browser Edge Client class and then make calls into the different methods that are uh, that have been generated in here to make calls to you know, authenticate or or what have you. The other thing, as long as I'm in here, that I wanted to call out is I've started to populate uh, the npm uh, packaging keywords stanza with different uh, interesting things like zero trust. The npm ecosystem allows you to basically do SEO. So you can come back and do things like search for terms like zero trust. And um, you can see most of them are mine, the, the things that we're now talking about today and beyond. This was one that came up that had zero trust in it. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, this is a, an interesting thing that we have just recently started to do to increase the discoverability of ZD, uh, at least among the, the, uh, the developers who are participating in the NPM world. By now you might be wondering, you know, what's the reason for having so many of these uh, browser-related ZD subcomponents? One of the reasons is we need to have some core functionality in, in different arenas. There's different ways to ZDify web applications. The touchless way, which is what we have typically seen in, in the browser world, and the manual zedification uh, style, which is when a developer actually manually instruments their source code to make calls into our SDKs. The mechanisms that we had in the original browser stack did not facilitate ease of uh, you know, getting to the controller or ease of using the PKI or any of that through normal SDK calls uh, because what we refer to as a ZD JS SDK was, um, wasn't really packaged up that way. So we're fixing that. And uh, furthermore, in, a, in, in the uh, touchless certification world, uh, there's a, there were some, some problems where we had to use uh, different pieces of the, uh, of the logic on what I'll call the page side of the browser, as well as the service worker side of the browser. And when uh, stratifying things will have uh, decompose things into, into a little bit more fine grain chunks uh, makes that a lot easier and alleviates a lot of the problems that we had. Sometimes it's easier to see how the components that we're discussing today relate by looking at a picture. So this is um, the, uh, the HTTP agent uh, is what hosts and serves up the ZD Browser service worker. 
uh, gives that back to the browser after the, the runtime has asked for it. And the, the service worker embeds some other things like service worker strategies, which embed the ZD Browser core, which in turn has the ZD Browser Edge client and the, and the LibCrypto uh, web assembly. So that's how that relates. The ZD Browser runtime is the JS blob that the HTTP agent injects uh, upon the first page load. This will have logic to get things spun up and there will be intercepts in, in this area. But when it comes time to do PKI work by way of libcrypto uh, or uh, communicate with the, uh, the, uh, the controller, uh, it will rely on the core because it's some common functionality that needs to be used uh, either on the runtime or in the service worker side. So that's how uh, the components relate here. A very quick demo to show how all these components come alive in the browser. So I have uh, my local HTTP agent running. Uh, what did we just do here? So we, we hit the, uh, the ZD HTTP agent, which goes across into the dark uh, network and brings back uh, the first page from uh, I'm using Mattermost as my dark app, so that's that's what uh, that's what my test app is. And instead of just returning the the HTML that came from the app, uh, as you've seen before, we inject some um, some of ourselves uh, in there. In this in this particular case, we're we're bringing in the ZD Browser runtime. The ZD Browser runtime itself uh, comes across the wire, and the first thing that it tries to do is spin up the web assembly. So you'll see. Uh, it comes across the wires about 2.2 megs. Most of that is the WebAssembly blob itself. And this octet stream here is not actually going over the network. It's actually the uh, JS runtime using the wrappers that I have uh, around the WebAssembly to instantiate it. And it comes across uh, in, in, in this browser, in this uh, network trace, looking like a, a request to a, this application octet stream URL and the base64 uh, blob that you see there is all of the, the uh, OpenSSL WebAssembly. Once we have instantiated that, asynchronously we'll proceed onward and ask for this the service worker who then comes across the wire and, and unfolds itself in these various chunks. And the last one is uh, the chunk that has the libcrypto in it. So now we have um, the WebAssembly on both the page side and the service worker side of the application. Some of the things that are already manifesting inside the ZD Browser core is some common logging framework. So you'll see uh, just some, some demonstration calls that we're making inside the browser runtime itself uh, that we have indeed initialized and gotten the WebAssembly. If we go to the Application tab and click on Service Workers. Uh, here we are. The ZD Browser Service Worker JS has come across. It will keep track of of some uh, some things on its own in its own cache. So the performance that we have uh, based on the new way that we've written the service workers should improve things quite a bit. That's all I wanted to include in this video. The next increment that you'll see will be built out of the guts of the, the core and the PKI that's there to take advantage of that OpenSSL WebAssembly and basically forklift the logic out of the old JavaScript SDK and interact with the ZD controller to spin up those ephemeral certs increment after that will be to actually uh, do true TLS to the edge routers using the mechanisms that are in the uh, OpenSSL WebAssembly. So watch for that coming soon. If you get any questions, send them my way. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.